Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Queen Glade and I hope you have absolutely fabulous day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this super cool impressionistic card. If you want to know how to create it, I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. For my project, I'm going to use a free gift from Creative Stamping Magazine issue 118. The magazine comes with two sets of A4 stamp set collections called Wings and Things. As you can see, these are absolutely stunning. You probably know how much I love Creative Stamping Magazine, but this issue is my totally number one. I absolutely love every single image here and the sentiments including in the set. First, we're going to create a card base. So I've got 300 GSM white multi-purpose card and using my made to surprise lightweight circle cutter, I'm going to create the front and the back of my card. And this one is going to be pretty big because I want it to fit quite a lot of flowers. And this card is also personalized. So if you want to create something special, I do encourage you to do it because this stamp set collection from Creative Stamping Magazine is absolutely stunning. If you want to get the magazine, I left the links in the description down below. So yes, you can check them out. So I'm going to cut the front and the back of my card. And when these are ready, I'm going to create one more panel, but slightly smaller. And this way I'm going to have a smaller border around my card. And that's what I really like about card making, mats and layers, because they really make a difference. When this is ready, I decided to create an impressionistic background. And to do it, I've got quite a big range of alcohol markers here. And these are from Spectrum Noir, and these are all illustrators, which means they've got a really nice brush nib. And that's what I really wanted to use to create that background. I've never tried it before, but I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. As you can see, I just do some marks here and there. They are very random. But the idea is to cover as much as you want with the color palette of your choice. I decided to go with analog colors here. So I'm going to have some purples, a little bit of pink, but also some blue. And I think that's what really makes this card very special because I try to create something with cool tones, but every single thing will match beautifully. And that's what I really encourage you to do in your card making as well. Do you do uh, that technique or do you see it for the first time? Please let me know in the comments down below. As you saw, the magazine has lots of amazing stamps. And let me know if you have the magazine and if you use the free gift. If you have, please let me know what kind of card did you create. This card is personalized for a friend of mine who recently reached 5 thousand subscribers on her channel and I will leave the link to Monica's YouTube channel in the description down below so yes you can check her amazing inspiration as well. As you can see this background looks pretty good so far but there is always a way to add a few more things and as you can see I'm actually filling in all the gaps super quick and easy so if you want to create something with impressionistic style I think this technique is for you. It is super simple. You don't really need any special equipment. For this cut, I didn't use any of the cutting dies. So yes, you can do the same. You can also use some nesting circle cutting dies from your stash to create that card and I encourage you to explore your stash, use what you've got and make something special every day. I also wonder how often do you create personalized cards? Do you make them just for the birthday or maybe other occasions? So our background is ready. Now we have to decorate it. I stamped all those images from Creative Stamping Magazine issue 118 using Stays on Black Ink and using my scan and cut machine, I cut all those elements. And here I use 300 GSM white multi-purpose card because I really wanted all my elements to be super thick. 
As you can see, I've got quite a lot of elements I can use for lots of different projects, so stay tuned for all those videos. I decided to use that floral butterfly, but also those stunning flowers. They are simply gorgeous, so I thought, why not? Let's use them as a border. So I'm going to color in all the elements using the same alcohol markers. If you want, you can use your zig markers, aqua markers, or even pencils. The choice is absolutely yours. What I really like about Creative Stamping Magazine, that every single month they come with different absolutely amazing stamp set collection. And usually it is A4 size, but this time we've got two sheets of A4 size stamp sets and I think they were just made for me because there are lots of beautiful butterflies and if you know me I absolutely love them so when I saw this magazine I couldn't resist and I had to create something straight away with that amazing butterfly. What do you think about this floral butterfly? Do you like it? And if you were to color it what color combo? are you going to use? Please let me know in the comments down below. As you can see, to create my flowers, I'm using the darker and the lighter color. And as usual, I start with the darker color first, and then using the lighter, I'm going to create that shadow and light effect on all the elements. If you have never ever tried this technique, please do it. It is super simple to do. When these purple flowers are ready, I decided for the other set to use a little bit lighter tones and in this case I'm going to use some blues because purple and blue and a little bit of green, this is my totally favorite color combo. So yes, I couldn't resist and I had to use those colors all together. Do you like those colors as well? Or maybe you have a different color combo. Which one is your favorite? Please let me know in the comments down below. I also wanted to tell you that Valentine's Day is coming very soon and last year I released three designs with mandala patterns for Valentine's Day. If you want to see the video it is at the top right corner and there is a link to buy me a coffee website where you can download my designs for free and use them for your projects. So please check them out because you won't be disappointed and I'm pretty sure you will like those elements as well. So, as you can see, this card was a little bit, I wouldn't say maybe time consuming, but I absolutely enjoyed every single thing I colored. I absolutely love colors. So, as I said, this stamp set collection was made for me. Actually, it wasn't, but that's how I think. Because I love coloring, I love butterflies and flowers, and this is my totally favorite so far. Do you subscribe to any of the card making magazines? If you do, please let me know which one is it. Currently, I only do two magazines, Creative Stamping Magazine and Simply Cut and Paper Craft. And every single month you get a free gift, which you can use for a variety of projects. And that's why I really like them. When the flowers are ready, it will be time to color in the butterfly. And at this point, I thought, I know what's the recipient's favorite color. So the recipient's favorite color is green. So I thought I have to add that color somewhere on the card to make it even more special. So let's put all the flowers to the side because we are going to use them later on. So let's have a look at the butterfly and I'm going to start with the right wing using three different shades of green. I really want to have some color variation and with the illustrators when you flick the nib you actually have that really nice shadow effect with the darker and super light color. I wonder have you ever used illustrator markers? If you have maybe you have your favorite set. Please let me know which one is it. Here as you can see I've got the selection so I can't really tell you which sets they come from because I was coloring other images in the meantime and I literally took all my illustrators from the packaging and I had them on the side because I colored a lot recently. So stay tuned for all those beautiful videos in a few weeks. When this wing is ready, I decided with the left wing to add a little bit more vibrant color. And actually, if you look at any impressionistic paintings, they are very vibrant, very colorful, with very short, 
thick and spontaneous brush strokes. And that's why I decided to use illustrators for this card. If you do have your favorite painting from Impressionism, please let me know which one is it. I totally adore Water Lily Pond by Monet. If you haven't seen my video where I created 3D Water Lily Pond, please check the link at the top right corner. So with the flowers, I decided to use a little bit of lighter pink. And it's always a good idea to use a scrap piece of card so you can actually check the colors before you put them together. And this is my biggest trick for you. Just do that technique. Use a scrap piece of paper because sometimes some of the colors don't really go well together. But if you check it on the piece of the card first, then you'll make sure that everything matches beautifully. So again, I'm going to use some green on the leaves, some small purple flowers and that pink. It is simply gorgeous, don't you think? Now it is time for the body of the, of the butterfly and I decided to use some two purple colors because why not? When this is ready, we can actually start assembling the card. And I decided first to use a little bit of ribbon to give it even more special effect. Do you use ribbons in your card making? Please let me know in the comments down below. Here I also try to check if two will be good, but I thought no, just use one layer of ribbon. And it is a lacy ribbon and I think they add the elegance to the card how often do you use lace ribbon on your cards? Please let me know in the comments down below. As you can see, I'm using my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, to put all those elements together. It's always a good idea because you do have time to maneuver your elements and if you make a mistake, no one will ever know because that glue dries clear. On the back, I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape because I really want that lace to stay in place and never ever move. So yes, you can use that trick as well. When this is ready, it is time to put some of the elements together. As you can see, I try to fix the tape on one of the sides and the background is ready. Now I'm going to do a dry run to put all the flowers on the border. I usually create more flowers just in case. So here I actually had a few left over which I can use for my future projects. So this is how it's going to look like and now it is time to put some glue on top. If you want, you can also use some double-sided foam adhesive and that will make your cut even more special. How often do you use flowers in your cards? Do you create paper flowers? Do you stamp them? Or do you create 3D flowers? I'm really curious what's your favorite technique, so please let me know. As you can see, this card will be pretty flat altogether. But you can always add some dimension, especially with the big butterfly. And I'm going to show you how to do it, which is super, super simple. Now I'm going to shape the wings of the butterfly. As you can see, I'm only using my fingers. So yes, you can use the same technique for your butterflies as well. So what do you think about this color palette so far on the card? Do you like it or would you choose a different one? Now I'm going to use the same scrap piece of card and using my scan and card machine, I created two shadows and 5,000 because my friend recently got 5,000 subscribers on her channel. And again, I'm going to use exactly the same three illustrator pens to color in the letters and the shadows. And whenever you create those elements using your Scan and Cut and Cricut, they're going to have a wide border, but there is a way to fix it. So all you have to do is to use your alcohol marker on the side as well. And this way it will be absolutely special, beautiful, and everyone will think that you actually use the color card. It looks like this way, but you use the alcohol markers. Now it will be time to put those elements together. And again, I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, to put them together. Because as I told you, you do have time to maneuver the elements. So it's super quick, 
beautiful and very special and personalized. So that's exactly what we want. How often do you create personalized projects? Please let me know in the comments down below. Now you have to find the way where to put that sentiment or number on your card. But first we're going to create the card base and I'm going to use my scoring board from Crafters Companion as usual to create the top flap on the back panel. So score it, fold it, burnish and put them together using liquid glue. Super quick and easy, right? If you want to make sure that your card stands flat on a surface, you can actually cut the back a little bit at the very bottom with a straight line. But I didn't do it. If the recipient wants to do it, of course she can do it. There is plenty of space to write your message inside and now we can put our front panel on a card. First I'm going to remove the backing of the double-sided tape and put quite a lot of liquid glue because I really want this card to last forever. And when I'm ready with the placement, then I can put that 5,000 on the card. And at this point, I thought I really like this card, but is there a way I can make it even more special? And if you know me, you know how much I love gems. So in this case, I decided to use some green gems. And again, I really like the sparkle, but is there a way to make this card even more special? Of course it is. So I'm going to use my clear overlay and I'm going to color in the butterfly, but also that 5000 number. If you want, you can also use a wink of Stella. And with those pens, they have the beautiful shine, but when they dry, the sparkle is even more beautiful. So please use them in your card making. And our card is done. What do you think about this? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And here you can check the video from yesterday with Fancy Fold Craft Challenge. Have a fantastic day, happy crafting and stay inspired. Bye!